We are related. We are connected for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Together we'll do it. Amen. Hallelujah. We oh, thank you, Jesus, for today. God bless you, my brethren. You are watching Evangelist Grace Uju Okonkwo. Today we are showing Holy Ghost School in Gospel Land TV. As you're watching, the Lord will bless you. Our topic today says something unusual is happening around the world. But before then, I want us to pray and hand the topic unto the Lord, that the Holy Spirit will move us tonight. Let us pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we bless you, we thank you, we give you all praise and thanksgiving, we adore you. What a wonderful God. What a great day you have given to us in the land of the living. Glory, honor, power, majesty be unto you, for you alone is God, thou art worthy to receive our glory. Thank you, Jesus, for this moment. Take over this time, minister unto your people, that we may receive the grace of God to change at the end of this topic. Glory be to you forever. Holy Spirit, take over this moment. I give you praise. I trust you so much. I have confidence in you. You've always been doing it before. you still do it again. We hand over to you. Have your way, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Viewers, God bless you today. And... Um, I want to thank God on every one of us at listening to this topic. By the grace of God, as I said earlier, today's topic says something unusual is happening around the world. And um, there is shaking going all over the whole world. And uh, every one of us knows that we are in the last days. And the those shaking that is going on around the world is happening every day. There is no more happiness in this world. Everybody is being confused. The earth is going round and round. The people of the world is looking for solution. And the, the worst thing is that the more they look for solution, another thing unusual keep coming. Uh, governments, uh, scientists, and uh, even prayer warriors, a lot of things are going on. People are seeking for solution. But they never know that those things that is unusual, that's happening around the world is from God. Because God said it, which we are going to look in the life in the book of Hebrew. Bible says in the book of Hebrew. We are going to go to the word of God to understand what God says about those unusual things. And about the shaking that is going on the whole world. Because God said it, he will do it. He will shake the world. He will shake this earth that the world may know that he is the creator, the maker of all things. Amen. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to go to the uh, book of Hebrew. Hebrew 12. We start from verse 25. Amen. Hebrew 12, verse 25 says, See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if he did not escape, for if he did not escape, who refused him? Who spoke in on earth? Such more shall be not escape if he turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Those voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more. I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicate the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that are things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and the godly fear for our god is consuming fire hallelujah this particular verse of bible shake me because he's telling us here that unusual things will happen and he's about to shake the world why does god want to shake the world because of the things that is going on the earth the sin is swallowing the whole world people are playing with god the earth has forgotten the creator, the creatures have forgotten that there is a creator that makes all things. I know that there are some theologians that may be watching, there are some pastors, there are some ministers that may be watching. But I don't want us to go into dragging or into argument on this topic. Let us understand that the maker of this world has started shaking this world. And the more is coming. And why is God shaking this world? He's shaking this world because he's looking for man's attention. He wants the whole earth to come back to him. There is a global shaking. 
And this global shaking is not accidental. It is not by manpower. It is God that is doing it. Why? He's using it to draw attention of man back to himself. Because God has seen that man are, man are far, man have gone astray. Man doesn't seek him anymore. So the only way God can bring man close to himself is to begin to shake everything he has created. He has already started take, uh, uh, causing the world uh, uh, to, to cry every day. He has, uh, he has tapped the earth. He has um, taken away happiness. He has taken away uh, um, economy. Everything is collapsing. The oil is falling away. The, 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 the food, uh, the price of food is going up. Uh, uh, a lot of, there is, there is cry everywhere. There is shaking. People are mourning every day. And all these things are happening because God says it will happen. It's not by accident. He is doing it to draw us close. And what he says in the book of Hebrew chapter 12, he says, Now, yet once more indicate the removal of these things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. That means, he's telling us, there are things that you need to shake. There are things you need to remove. So that the kingdom, and that is why in the next verse, verse that he says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, that means it's that those only kingdom of God cannot be shaken. But every other kingdom, every other king, every other throne on earth must be shaken. And God is ready to throw them away. But he is promising us that there is only one kingdom, his own kingdom, it cannot be shaken. So as many that are putting their trust on the things of the world, as many that are looking for solution from the government, as many that are looking for solution from pastors, from churches, from here and there, solution is the only when we acknowledge our sin, when we remember the way we have a covenant with God, when we go back to the beginning, the Bible says that God is seeking for our first love. That is the only thing God is seeking for us. If you can remember the first love, if you can go back to the foundation where when we meet Jesus for the first time, if you can remember that he is the king, he is the Lord, he is the savior, he is the maker, he is the creator of all things, God is no more happy with men. God is angry with the church. God is angry with the families. God is angry with his children. Why? He has started shaking everything so that we might know that there is only one kingdom that cannot be shaken. And he's drawing our attention to go back to that kingdom, which is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All these great calamities that is happening around the world, we have to understand that we are not dealing with a human being. The world forgot that they are dealing with the old man in heaven. We are dealing with the king of kings, the maker of all things. The, the world is thinking that the, 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 the way things is going, they can solve their problem on themselves. And that is why as days are coming, God is increasing the problem, the calamities, the shaking everywhere. The problem is being there and is increasing. But the problem is that we refuse to, to, to read the handwritten in the world. God is writing the handwritten for us, for us to read through the shaking, through the problem, but we refuse to see it. Instead, we are looking for a man's solution. But God says, I will shake the world. I will shake everything. And when I shake them, the world will seek for me. And then I will release my kingdom, which is unshakable, which is everlasting. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are going to look into the word of God again in the book of Malachi. Amen. Malachi 3. By the grace of God, Malachi 3. God is speaking something. He said, verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come in his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, in which you, are, in which you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. You can hear the word of God. He says, he will prepare a way before him. And the only way he will prefer that way is only to shake every unshakable is to deal with the man by collapsing things, shaking things where men trust. All those places we put our trust. All those places we put our confidence. He is shaking our world. He is shaking the richest people in the whole world. Everywhere people are crying. The rich man are crying. The poor are crying. Everybody is crying. Why? Because the Lord says, I will make a way. I will prepare the way before I come. And the only way for the Lord to prepare the way is to shake all those things so that the world will cry and look for solution. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. As the Lord is telling us, he will prepare the way. And he said, suddenly he will come. And he said, the Lord whom we seek will suddenly come to his temple. 
even the messengers of the covenant, in whom we delight. What is he saying here? He's talking about the church. He says, suddenly he's about to appear in the church. The, the messenger is about to come. The king of glory is about to come. The Messiah is about to come. And he said before his appearance, he will prepare the way. He will make a way. And the only way he makes today for us to understand his appearance that is so imminent is that he is shaking every unshakable. He is pulling down things. He is destroying the, 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 the things he has made for man. He is touching everything that man has confidence on. And those things, God is doing it only to draw our attention. And what is he saying here? He says, suddenly he will appear in his temple. Means that the Lord is coming to the church to appear before his coming. And how does he going to appear in the church? He's coming with a judgment in the church. He's coming to expose everything that needs to be exposed. He's coming to reveal things to these people. He's coming to show himself. He's coming to manifest himself again. And we tell the manifestation of God in the church. The church will still play. Because today I notice that the church is playing. We are no more praying. And God needs the church to be together, to be one, so that he will release the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost that Jesus promised us, that is going to come again to sweep the earth and to gather the church for the second coming. So Jesus is telling us here that he is coming suddenly in his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, in whom we delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Then the next verse says, but who can endure the days of his coming? That is what I'm saying. That he said he is he's about to shake the world and he's already started shaking. But he said, who can endure the days of his coming? And that is what I'm saying. That he has already started showing us the day, the sign of his coming. And the sign of his coming is those shaking, calamities, troubles everywhere. And that is the sign. Brethren, let us understand what God is saying. Let us read the handwritten in the world and understand that the messenger, the king of God, the mess, the Messiah, is about to appear in his temple. And the only those that are spiritually alert will understand. As three says, For he, but, but who can endure the days of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refining fire, and like a rounder soul. He will sit as a refiner, and as a purifier of the silver. He will purify the sons of Levi. Hallelujah. God is speaking here. He said, He will refine us as the silver is refined. He will test us as gold is tested. He will provide the sons of Levi and he will purge us. Oh my goodness, God, I give you glory. What is he saying here? He said that he's coming to his church to refine the church. And this refining is taking place right now all over the church of God. God is refining us. God is calling individually, collectively. God is calling us to, to give him attention. God is using many things to refine us. He's using a lot of trials. He's testing us. He's giving us a lot of encounter. For us to be refined by him because he's, he's testing us. And the Bible says we must be tested. We must be refined as gold is refined. Before you can get the real gold, you put in gold in the fire. And the fire will, will refine the gold and present the best of the gold. God says in the book of Malachi 3, he said, I will refine you. I will refine the church. Why? Because Jesus is coming to rapture the church that is refined. God is coming to rapture the church that is tested. So everything we are passing through in this world, as it's shaking here and there, the earth is looking for solution, but yet no solution. It is the refining that is going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to pray. I want every one of us that hears this message to pick up his Bible and begin to study the word of God and believe Jesus and keep moving with him, believing that Jesus is already at hand. His coming is soon, as soon as possible. Let us pray. Father Lord, I bless you. Makina Sindara. Thank you, Jesus, because I believe you that you have started shaking the world. You have started giving us the right handwritten in the world as we are seeing you moving again on earth. Father, give us the grace of understanding your word, even this shaking, that we might know that it's no more certain. But you, Jehovah, who is seated in heaven, you are the one shaking the world. Give us grace to understand and tell us the, the solution that we might be able to meet up to your standard and be able to stand before the day of your coming. Hallelujah. Blessed be thy name. I love you, Jesus. Glory be to you forever. Bless your people as many that are listening to this message. In Jesus' powerful mighty name we pray. Amen. Until next time, we watching our uh, Evangelist Grace with Joe Kongbo on Gospel Night TV. Yeah. I pray that this Holy Ghost School show will touch your life. And, uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Together we'll do exploits.
We are related We are connected For the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ Together we'll do We are connected For the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ Together we'll do exploits We are related We are connected For the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ